It's a dangerous business, Frodo. Going out of your door, you step into the road. And if you don't keep your feet, there is no knowing where you might be swept off to. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wolf Game. This is Brady. And thanks for joining me for a tutorial and playthrough for The Lord of the Rings Journey to Mordor by Ultra Pro Entertainment. This is a roll and write game for two to four players. And we can see we have a two player game set up here. But let's go ahead and jump into the game. So the object of the game here is each player is going to pick uh, one of these characters at the top. So player one is going to select Frodo and player two will select Sam. And what we're going to do is get our hobbits from Bag End to Mordor. And the goal is to do that before the Nazgul Black Riders can reach the same destination. So essentially this is a race game. Uh, and maybe slightly less thematic is the element of the comp competitiveness. So Sam is trying to get there before Frodo in this case. The first player to get to the end wins. And I will also be playing with the advanced rules today. So each different location has a slightly different effect on the turn following when you arrive at that location. So we'll go through each of those as we get there. And now let's just kind of take a quick look at what each of the dice will do for us. So on your turn, you'll take all five dice and roll them. And each time you roll, you have to set aside at least one die um, you can set aside as many as you like, except you can't set aside two with the same icon. So if I had rolled two dice with this picture of Gandalf, then I would only be able to set aside one of them and I would have to re-roll the other. And you just keep doing that until you have set aside all of your dice, or if you happen to roll this white tree, which is only on, I believe, one face of this black die, so it's the most rare symbol there. If you roll this, you have the choice to stop immediately and just resolve the dice that you've already set aside. So that's a way to prevent some of the bad things from happening if that comes out. So we'll talk about these in order of what, how you resolve them. So after you've set them all aside, you're going to resolve their effects in this order. So starting with Gandalf. Um, the picture looks like that. He is just going to make it harder for the Nazgul to progress. So if we'd set aside one Gandalf, I would draw a line through the middle of one of these squares. And essentially that turns that into two locations that the Nazgul have to travel instead of just one, slowing them down and giving us more of a chance to get our hobbits to Mordor. And then if you set aside one of these, for each of these set aside, you're going to fill in one of these locations for the Nazgul traveling along the path. And then the next icon is the fellowship icon. So each of these is going to cancel out the effect of one of the orcs. So an orc, if you have to set aside one of these, it's gonna cancel all of the rings that you've set aside. So one orc will negate any of these. So if you had three rings and just one orc, none of these would take effect. And the rings are what allow the hobbits to move. Each ring lets the hobbit move one space. So uh, we definitely want to avoid the orcs and that's how we do it is with these fellowship icons here. But you have to have one of these per orc to negate it. So if I had one fellowship icon, but two orcs. Again, uh, we are still gonna have to negate all of those. And then the last element here is kind of the competitive portion. So let's say um, it's Frodo's turn. So you can see his color is yellow and he set aside a red Nazgul die. So if he sets this aside on his turn, instead of pushing those Nazgul forward on his sheet, it's gonna affect Sam, because he's the red player. So these colored dice are matching those four player colors for a reason. 
And if you're only playing with two players, the blue and the green here, or whichever colors aren't chosen, will only affect the active player. And just that one die that matches the other player that is waiting their turn, that's the only one that's gonna affect them on the active player's turn. So with that, let's just go ahead and get started. We'll start here with Frodo on the left and see how we fare. Okay, so we have two orcs, a fellowship, a Nazgul, and the white tree. So if we roll any Nazgul, we have to set aside at least one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, we could just stop now because of this white tree, but I don't really have anything that I want to I'm really, I'm looking for some rings or a Gandalf before I'd want to stop with that this turn. So we're going to also set aside this fellowship and then we'll re-roll these three. Okay, and we did get another Nazgul, but we also got a ring. And I think we'll go ahead and stop there because most of this dice has bad things on it except for one ring and one tree so we'll stop at that so we have two Nazgul and one fellowship so that was not a great turn for Frodo so he's gonna come here to Rivendell and the Nazgul are gonna head him out and get up in front of him there to Moria. And so now, we go over to Sam. And we have three orcs, a ring, and then that Nazgul. So we do have to set that one aside. And we'll also keep that ring. And we're going to reroll all three of those orcs. Okay, so we got... I think we're gonna keep all of these. We have another Nazgul that we have to keep. And then we have one more ring and we have a Gandalf. So we're gonna take first Gandalf, he comes into play. And so he's going to slow down the Nazgul. And then after that, the Nazgul are gonna come into play and so they're gonna go to those two new loca two locations, the original one and then that new one created by Gandalf, slowing them down. And then Sam gets to move up to Moria, and move two spaces. Okay. All right, so now we're back to Frodo. And let's see, we have a Nazgul and a ring we want to keep. And let's keep that fellowship and re-roll these two here. Oh, and actually, let me read the special ability for Rivendell, where Frodo is leaving for the advanced game. The power of Rivendell is to reserve similar symbols. So if you crossed out of Rivendell on your ring bear track last turn, which we did, so we went there last turn, we're now greeted by Elrond. During this turn, you may reserve as many similar symbols as you wish. So if I had rolled two or three rings, I could keep them all. And so with that, really it didn't help us with the roll we got this time, but we're gonna roll these two again and see what we get. Another fellowship and a ring. And let's try for one more ring. And we got an orc, but that's okay because we have this fellowship die that cancels that out. And there's no Gandalf. So we have a Nazgul here that's going to push ahead into Lothlorien area. And now we have 
two rings, which allows us to move forward two spaces into Lothlorien as well. All right, so let's go back to Sam, and this time I'll read that advanced location ability in advance. So he's moving from Moria. So in Moria, Gandalf is powerless. Here you meet the Balrog and Gandalf cannot help you. You may still reserve a Gandalf die, but his positive effect it does not exist here. So uh, if we roll Gandalf, we can keep him just to avoid getting something worse with that die, but he's not gonna have his normal ability. Okay, so we've got a Gandalf, two fellowships, and two Nazgul. So we'll set aside the one Nazgul there. And let's go ahead and keep one of these fellowships as well. And re-roll the rest. Okay, so we got two rings. Uh, we can keep one of them. And we've got a Nazgul we have to set aside. And re-roll again. We got another Gandalf. So we'll set him aside there. So again, Gandalf is powerless in Moria, so nothing happens for that one. The Nazgul are gonna move forward two more spaces. And then Sam is gonna move into Lothlorien. All right, now we're gonna go back here to Frodo again. And oh, let's read what happens moving from Lothlorien. The fellowship strengthens. At these locations, elves give you shelter. While evaluating your dice, you may count each fellowship symbol twice. So here with the strength and fellowship, one fellowship symbol can neutralize two orc symbols. So those, let's see. We didn't get any fellowship symbols. We did get a Gandalf, we'll keep him. And we got two rings, so let's keep that one and re-roll those three. Okay, we got two more orcs and another ring. So we're gonna keep that one and re-roll those two. And we got two fellowship symbols. So we'll keep one and see if we can get something in here. And an orc. So first we have Gandalf those down here. So he is going to slow down the Nazgul right there. And amazingly, we didn't get any Nazgul this time, so they're going to stay where they're at. And Frodo is going to move two spaces into Helm's Deep. And this fellowship did cancel out that work, which allowed us to take that movement. All right, now we're gonna go back over to Sam and he has that same ability. So the fellowship is gonna count against two orcs again for us. So here we got two Gandalfs, a ring, a fellowship, and a Nazgul. So we're gonna have to move that one. We definitely wanna keep the ring and one of the Gandalfs. And let's go ahead and keep that one just in case we roll an orc here and we did so there we go so first of these is gandalf's going to come into play and slow down the nazgul and then the nazgul are going to move and so they're just going to take half of that space so here we can see a little bit better next time we're just gonna color in that second half of that square. Now we check to make sure that we are able to combat all the orcs and we were, and this fellowship icon here actually would have counted even if we'd had a second orc because we're in Lothlorien. And then our one ring allows us to move into Rohan. So now we'll go back over here to Frodo, and he is leaving from Helm's Deep. 
So in Helm's Deep, orcs strengthen. Here you meet Saruman. During the evaluation of your result, all orcs count twice. And so really we just have the opposite of what we had moving from Lothlorien. We'd need two fellowships just to combat that one orc. So let's see if we can get out of Helm's Deep. Okay, we got two Gandalf symbols, an orc, another orc, and a white tree. So let's keep Gandalf and reroll everything else. Okay, we got a fellowship, a ring, and a Nazgul. So let's keep all three of those and hope we don't get an orc. Oh, and we got another ring. That was lucky. Okay, so starting with Gandalf. He's going to slow down these Nazgul even more. And then we move the Nazgul one space. And then there are no orcs to combat. So we get to use both of those rings and move Frodo through Gondor straight to Minas Tirith. Okay, let's move back over to Sam. Sam is leaving Rohan. So in Rohan, he gets to roll again. Here you meet Eomer. Each time you roll the dice, you may re-roll all of them exactly once. For example, if you roll the dice and do not like the result, you take these dice and roll them again. After that, you must set aside at least one die. And afterwards, you must roll the remaining dice. If you do not like the result, you can re-roll all of them as before. So. Essentially, we just get a mulligan, or just an extra roll each time we go, so. Let's see, this might be a great time to demonstrate that. So we have three orcs, a Nazgul, and a tree. So we get to just re-roll everything because we are leaving Rohan and see if we can do better. So yeah, we got a ring here. We got a fellowship and let's reroll these three. Okay, we have to set that one aside and we'll reroll those two orcs. We'll keep the Gandalf and roll. There's an orc and we, because of that ability from Rohan can try one more time to get something better than the orc, and it's another Gandalf. So let's put both of those Gandalfs into play here. And Sam is gonna slow down the Nazgul significantly. Or Gandalf's gonna slow him down for Sam. And then player two does not have any orcs to combat, so we're gonna set that one aside. The Nazgul are going to move one more space there. And then Sam is also going to move on to Helm's Deep. All right, let's move back over here to Frodo. And now we're leaving Minas Tirith. And the advanced effect here is all Nazgul symbols advance. Here you meet the Witch King of Angmar. All symbols, including the colors of other players, only affect you. So we haven't actually really had that affect our players here. But let's see. So now, even if the red one, for example, were to have a Nazgul symbol, it would still only affect Frodo this turn. We do have to set that one aside. And we got another Gandalf, so we'll keep that. And reroll all three of those orcs. And we got a Nazgul and two more orcs. A Nazgul and another orc. That is terrible luck. And an orc. Okay, so we start with Gandalf here. So we do get to slow them down a little bit, but then the Nazgul are gonna advance three spaces. And we did not get any rings, and even if we had, we 
couldn't combat that orc. So Frodo is going to stay where he's at. So we'll go back over here to Sam. And now if you remember here at Helm's Deep, the orcs have double strength. So we would need two fellowships to combat them. So we do have a Nazgul symbol. We got it. Oh, that was a ring. A ring and we can combat the orc. And let's just set that one aside as well and go ahead and evaluate the dice. So there's no Gandalf symbol here this time. So we start with the Nazgul advancing one space. And then first we see, and oh, we actually did not defeat that orc because we are moving from Helm's Deep. So we do not get to move forward and is technically we could have re-rolled this black one. So let's see what that would have done for us. And that would have been another orc anyways. So we are just gonna stay put at Helm's Deep. So back to Frodo. And again, this is from Minas Tirith. So all Nazgul symbols will only affect the active player. So we got one Nazgul there. And we got a Gandalf and a Fellowship. So let's try and get a ring with one of these two. And there we go, we have a ring and an orc. So we're pretty happy with that roll. We'll start here with the Gandalf. And again, just divide that one into two spaces there. And then the Nazgul are going to advance. So we'll move one more space here. And we can combat this orc with that fellowship die. So we are allowed to move forward with that ring. So we are pushing forward into Shelob's lair. So Frodo now just needs to move one more space to end the game. So let's see if Sam has a chance to catch up here. And again, we're in Helm's Deep, so those orcs are doubly strong. All right, we got three Nazgul symbols, one orc and a fellowship. So we're gonna keep one of those fellowships and we do have to keep one of those and then reroll these three. We got three orcs. That was nasty. That sounds about right for Helm's Deep. And two more orcs. I don't think we're going anywhere this time. And another Nazgul. All right, so Sam is going to see the Nazgul moving forward two spaces. And did not get any rings, and even if he had, there were way too many orcs attacking the walls of Helm's Deep to get out right now. So let's go back to Frodo and see what happens moving from Shelob's lair. So the effect here is there is but one ring. Here you meet Shelob. At the end of your turn, you must have at least two ring symbols to reach Mordor and finish your journey. So let's see if he can make that final push from Shelob's Lair to Mordor. And if only we could keep both of those rings, but let's keep that one and we'll keep the Gandalf and keep that fellowship as well. And we roll here. And we got another ring and another fellowship. So we're happy with that. And so here, Gandalf, is going to slow down the Nazgul one more step, even moving to Mordor. And there's no orcs to combat. And so we have both of those rings required 
to make it into Mordor and drop the ring into the cracks of Mount Doom. So now that he's made it to Mordor, Sam gets one more turn to see if he can miraculously get four rings and no orcs. So let's see. Oh, we have one Nazgul symbol and a ring. And we can't keep both of those, so we're just gonna reroll all of these and see what happens. Oh, we have a Gandalf and let's try one more. Oh, we have two orcs, so not moving anywhere, but we were already losing anyways if we didn't get four rings, so might as well push to the end there, see, see if we could try our luck. And that is Journey to Mordor by Ultra Pro Entertainment. And I hope you enjoyed playing along with me. I will here in the near future also be doing another playthrough of this game with this expanded edition map that is fan made and you can find this on boardgamegeek.com under the files section for Lord of the Rings Journey to Mordor. And I printed this out in color and got it laminated. And really what it does is it just, you, know, you start out up here in the Shire, just like we did here. And you have more options of which path you wanna take to eventually get down here to Mount Doom in Mordor. So it just makes it a little bit bigger, fuller of a game. And also included with that is full advanced rules, just like we played with this one. So each of these areas are gonna have abilities as well. So if after watching the playthrough today, you wanted something more, uh, but you still want to get this game, there is some fan-made options that do make this even more, um, just more special location activations and more variety and choice in where you're gonna take your character as you move along the path. So join me for that one. Subscribe down below and turn on the bell for notifications and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. What are you still doing in there? You mean to say you stayed for that entire video? I guess that means it's time for another game. Click below to subscribe and we'll get another game to the table.